Ready to go? Uh, good morning. This morning I'm joined by Martin Campbell from Safe Work SA and Superintendent Doc Bray from Major Crime Investigation Branch. Um, on the 6th of April 2020, Anne-Marie Smith died in the Royal Adelaide Hospital after being located at her home address in such a condition that she was unable to sustain life. Annie, as she was known to her friends, had cerebral palsy and had engaged Integrity Care SA to provide care through the funding from the National Disability Insurance Scheme. As you know, her carer, Rosa Mayone, was arrested and charged with manslaughter on the March 18, 2020, sorry, on March 18, 2022. She was sentenced to six years and seven months jail with a non-parole period of five years and three months. Today, I just advise that as a result of the ongoing investigation by Major Crime and Safe Work SA, this morning two directors of Integrity Care were arrested. The two directors and Integrity Care SA have been charged with criminal neglect causing death pursuant to the Criminal Law Consolidation Act in relation to the death of Anne-Marie Smith. All three are further charged under the Work Health and Safety Act with failing to comply with the health and safety duty that exposed Annie to the risk of death, serious injury or illness. This arrest was the result of a milestone joint investigation between Safe Work SA and SAPOL. It's the first time that both agencies have co-located in such a manner to, show, to lead to the effective outcome that we've seen thus far today. What we'd say is that when people accept a duty of care to look after those who are sick and vulnerable in our community, it demands and it rightly expects that they will deliver the highest standard of care to those people. In this case, we will allege that sadly that did not occur and it resulted in the death of Annie. I'd now like to hand over to Superintendent Bray and to Martin Campbell, um, and then at the end we're happy to take any questions. The purpose of today is to give you a brief update, but I just remind everybody that we can't actually talk about the evidence because now we have charges pending against the directors, but I'll tell you as much as I can. As we've alleged previously, um, this was a pre preventable death and should never have occurred and would never have occurred if the proper level of care was provided throughout. Task Force Giles started off as a criminal and coronial investigation and it was conducted by a major crime investigation branch. You'll be aware that that investigation resulted in the arrest of Rosa Mayoni and who received a significant sentence. Um, that sentence is probably one of the first times that we've had a carer in prison for such an offence and in such circumstances and should send a strong message to others who are prepared to neglect patients and put their lives at risk. You'll recall um, through the investigation there was jewellery missing, there was a car misuse, there was property missing. Um, we have our own belief as to what happened with some of that, but there isn't proof to progress any charges in relation to that. Subsequent to the um, conviction of Rosa, we continued the investigation, focused on the role of Integrity Care SA, and in uh, 2020, the investigation stalled because of claims following a search of the officers of Integrity Care there were legal professional privilege claims in respect to um, the evidence or the information we'd seized. We have no issue with those claims and the lawyers representing the accused worked with us to resolve the claims as quickly as possible. It just took a long time because of the volume of material and it wasn't until November last year that we could recommence examining that material. At that time, we joined forces with Safe Work SA so that we could have a combined investigation and use the expertise of both agencies. And that is what has contributed to the success of this investigation. As the deputy said, the directors of the company and the company itself, Integrity Care, have been charged with criminal, criminal neglect causing death. And that's an offence akin to manslaughter and carries a penalty of up to life imprisonment. Integrity Care and the directors have also been charged with failing to meet their duties um, and thereby creating a serious risk of death 
uh, injury or illness to Annie. The next stage of this investigation will be finalising the brief of evidence against those charged and we expect that that will take about three months. I can say that we're extremely grateful for the support of the community, um, for those people from Integrity Care, employees, employees who have assisted us and the 94 callers that have run Crime Stoppers. And I just take this opportunity to remind everybody there are lots of good carers out there. There were good carers who were employed by Integrity Care and who would have had no knowledge of what was occurring. There's also employees that have assisted us. Pass over to Mark. Thank you, Des. Um, I'd just like to, to thank the community for coming forward and helping with this because without your evidence and information, it makes it extremely difficult um, to investigate. Uh, these sorts of offences are already complex enough. Uh, so I really appreciate the community who've stepped up and, and also to thank SAPOL uh, for their support. So as, as Des and Linda said, this is the first joint police Safe Work SA uh, investigation that we've had. Um, I firmly believe that there will be more and certainly more joint investigations with other regulators. The last three years, Safe Work SA investigation team and training program has aligned to detective training. So it makes working within the same investigative methodology very helpful when we're working in joint incident rooms like this. So from a work health and safety perspective, Integrity Care as an employer had a duty of care not only to the workers, but to other people as well. And this is where Annie fell into the definition and within our jurisdiction. Every time Rosa Mione went into Annie's house, it became a workplace. And there was a duty of care extended to Annie through that company. And as Des said, it's our allegation that that duty fell short, causing harm and ultimately death to Annie. But as well as having that duty of care as a business, there's a duty of care for officers of a, of a business. And these are the directors, the people who run organisations. You have to ensure that that duty is discharged and you have to ensure that it's done to a reasonably practicable level. So it's one thing to have an organisation and a business and, and have that duty, but it's another question altogether to make sure that your work health and safety obligations are carried through. And from our perspective, we say that they weren't and that they fell short. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's very important because those people are working within Integrity Care. So we're grateful for those people. Um, and realistically, we've had a lot of cooperation from a lot of people in this case. Um, and we're extremely grateful for that. So it's made a big difference. Were they aware of any of this beforehand? Were they aware and not able to... No, nah, I don't think... I don't think there would have been many people at all um, that would have known. There are people that should have known. But I would expect that there was a lot of carers working for Integrity Care who would have been horrified. Are you expecting to lay any further charges um, on anyone at Integrity Care? Uh, not at this stage, but um, we'll see what happens over the next three months. You mentioned that you, you didn't think too many people within the structure of that company were aware of what was going on inside Amy Smith's home. Do you think that's because of the individuals who have been charged now? Are you alleging that they concealed what was going on? I probably will decline to answer that because I don't want to um, say something that might prejudice the trial. How much did they know about what was going on? I think the question in this will come back to who knew what and what should people have known. The delays that you talked about earlier in relation to the lawyers, did that hamper your investigation at all? It was frustrating, but it's a legitimate legal claim. Um, and once that claim was made, we had good contact with those lawyers, they were representing their clients as they should and they worked with us to resolve the claims as quickly as possible and the delays were caused by the volume of material, both electronic and documentary, um, which spanned um, many, many years, like back to 2005, uh, 2015, sorry. Given that um, this investigation has been going for a couple of years now and the fact you've only just arrested two of the integrity care directors, is it given then that span of time, given you know, a bit of a heads up? that this might be coming, and, and if so, have they been able to conceal the evidence that you're worried about? No, we, we are very, very happy that we cast the net early and we secured everything, um, and the delay is simply being looking at what we'd seized, 
but we couldn't uh, review that until the claims were addressed. Do you have claim stopper calls also contribute to what you found as well? Yeah, we definitely got some evidentiary material out of crime stopper calls. Are you able to go into the nature of the surveillance of the two individuals that you've announced have charged today over the course of this investigation? What type of surveillance was used? Uh, we can't talk, uh, we wouldn't talk about that. Um, but we're, we were just happy that they weren't able to practice and they weren't involved in care anymore, so that risk had been eliminated earlier by the respective agencies that control those approvals. Just in relation to the jewellery theft and um, the use of the car, you said you had a belief about what might have happened but you can't make any charges yet. Are those investigations still ongoing? How no. no. And are these two people who are rated uh, suspicious as suspects in, in those thefts? No. Is, I mean, are you disappointed that you've got to that point? Because this, those, throughout this investigation and some of the announcements made by you um, around the theft of the jewellery and the use of the car, they were very prominent uh, in trying to get information and putting out to the public. Are you very disappointed that you've got to this point uh, in terms of those aspects of the investigation? It would have been nice to have a result, but I think if you look at the end game, it's far better that those responsible for any care are held accountable for what they did do or didn't do. And I've, I'm very, very happy that um, with the results today. If you could just go into, again, the two individuals that were arrested, can you take us um, into the circumstances of their arrest? When, where, and how did they respond to your presence? Uh, the um, two people attended. Uh, we arranged uh, for the arrest today through their solicitors. They attended and met us at the City Watch House and they were taken into custody there and they remained there until the front court this afternoon. I suppose there was a people arrested, um, a person who has previously been arrested? No. Can I have a question for Martin? Yes. Um, you've, you've struggled in other cases to get to this point. Are you confident that you've done enough? I'm 100% confident that we've done a really thorough, diligent and quality investigation, and we've done that with SAPOL. Um, I'm equally confident that we've done other high quality investigations. Um, and, and I'll be honest to say that it's no, it's no secret that that wasn't the case five or six years ago, but we are a very different organisation now to what we were then. So in relation to this investigation and more recent ones, very confident that we've done as much as we can to give the family some closure. Do you think you might have had more success with previous safe work investigations if they involved if you've involved police before? No, no, I don't. Um, I'm happy that the investigations we've conducted the last three or four years have been good ones. Um, I hundred percent support my staff and they did good work. Um, like any investigative function, you can't always get a prosecution and um, and sometimes there's just not enough evidence to prove beyond all reasonable doubt. That doesn't mean that the businesses who we investigate are good. Uh, it just means that we can't prove. Can I just ask, um, has uh, Annie's, Annie's family members been informed about today's arrests? Yes, everyone was advised this morning. And their reaction? I, I didn't speak to them, but um, the officer that has spoken to people, uh, her friends and next to kin, um, they're extremely grateful. Can I please just ask a bit for the commissioner? Um, not concerned that it's on the rise, but there's certainly the visibility of it is, is quite evident in terms of the type of offending. Um, and we have, obviously, we're responding to that in, in as quickly as we can. Um, and I think you might maybe be referring to the incident overnight at the liquor outlet. Um, we were quickly on that, um, and the seven um, offenders were all arrested quite quickly, so they're all in custody. Are you doing We have various activities that are working with youth crime from the prevention through to the response phase. Um, as you know, we have Operation Mandrake and we have Operation Milled underway. Um, and our patrol response is, is obviously the first line of defence when the jobs are called into us. But we're working in a proactive space to try and understand um, if the groups are evolving, if there are particular groups, which is why we have Milled and why we have Mandrake. So there's a significant amount of resources deployed to this. I think this morning shows the, the quick response is one of the key initiatives. Thank you. Last question. Last question. Last question. Last question. Last question. Last question. Last question.
I'd just like you to sort of reflect on the statement that you'd like to sort of tell the industry. You mentioned there before, uh, in, in your opening remarks, that there are a lot of people uh, that were cooperative that, uh, and across the industry that are doing the right thing. Um, but what sort of statement do you want these arrests to be to those who aren't? I, I think it's as Martin said, if you own a company uh, or a business that delivers care, or if you're a person engaged to deliver care, once you do that, you have to really um, discharge your duties professionally. And in simple terms, just treat the people that you're caring for as you would the most precious person in your life. It's not hard. You don't need a degree to know that what happened to Annie is wrong. Just treat the people as you would like your loved ones and have the systems, policies and procedures in place to ensure that that level of care is provided to everybody on every occasion. Thank you. Thank you.